Number 15, Stephen Kosher. In a missing persons case, you'd think that surveillance footage of the victim would be a huge break in the case and lead to a very happy ending for the loved ones of those that disappeared. However, in many cases such as this one, surveillance footage only brings up more questions. In April of 2009, a young man named Stephen Kosher abruptly quit his job for no apparent reason and then moved to St. George, Utah. It is said while in St. George, he struggled to find a stable job. He did odd jobs and handy work for several months as he burned through his savings and was unable to find consistent income. On December 12, 2009, Stephen left St. George in the same manner that he had run from his hometown of Salt Lake City. The day after fleeing from St. George, he made a strange phone call to two friends claiming that he was in Las Vegas. According to reports, he sounded fine during these phone calls, but he never really explained his reason from running to Las Vegas, though it can be assumed he was there looking for work. This phone call was the last time anyone in Steven's life ever heard from him. He never attempted to call his friends or family again, and they were not able to contact him either. After a few months, a missing persons report was filed in relation to Steven's sudden lack of communication. During the investigation, Steven's car was found abandoned in what can be considered an upscale neighborhood in Henderson, Nevada. The first red flag is why would his car be abandoned? And more importantly, why would he be in such a nice neighborhood if he had no friends or family in Nevada, and no means of income to sustain a lifestyle in such a region? Another huge concern was the wrapped Christmas presents in the back of his vehicle. Again, Stephen had been struggling financially for that long. It's hard to imagine him having money to buy several presents for each family member and even harder to imagine him leaving them all behind. Investigators found surveillance footage taken the day after the mysterious phone call. On December 14, 2009, the footage is from a security camera of a homeowner near where Steven's car was parked. It shows him parking his car and walking across the street before disappearing out of frame never to be seen again. His phone call was marked at several locations a few miles from where he left his car, but it never moved further than that before dying two days later. Steven's family, as well as over 70 volunteers in the area, set up search parties. There had not been a body, a report, or a single piece of new evidence in relation to Steven in over six years. People speculate he vanished to start a new life, or perhaps became involved in dangerous activities as a new way of making income. Number 14. The Floating City our channel is no stranger to the idea of parallel universes, interdimensional beings, and paranormal happenings. All over the world, every day people report strange sightings and events that only seem explainable by the unknown. However, this one is fairly unique as nothing like this has been reported before and has certainly never been caught on video. The video was captured in 2015 in Foshan, a city in the Guangdong province of China. It seems to show a large rain cloud which holds a city inside, or at least that's the best way it can be described. There's a huge dark grey cloud in the sky, just as any cloud on a rainy day, but there's a very clear skyline of a city. The lines of the building are straight, clear, and easy to recognize. The city is filled with skyscrapers and in comparison to its location, it's a fairly large city as well. A few days after this sighting, several people from a nearby province reported the same exact thing to local authorities and, of course, religious leaders. There have been various explanations and speculations from all over the world. It seems, though, that the most popular explanation to this is that there was a time of time or space rip in the location of the sky which allowed onlookers to peer into another dimension. Weather experts have said that this is actually a mirage known as Fata Morgana which commonly makes distant objects or regions appear to be floating. This is most common near water horizons on hot days though, so not many people take this as a simple explanation. Besides, what does it hurt to believe that there's more out there and that once in a while the humans of this realm are able to peer into the unknown? No matter what you believe in concerns to the city in the sky, it's a huge mystery that has been argued from every side of the spectrum and will probably be a very long time before we have a solid answer as to what we've seen here. Number 13, Timothy J. Pitson. This is another missing persons case in which surveillance footage opened the door to more questions than answers. Timothy was six years old and was the son of James and Amy Fry Pitson. He was living with his parents in Aurora, Illinois at the time of his disappearance in 2011. The young boy was the couple's only child and according to family reports, there was no signs of abuse within the family or even between the spouses. Early on the morning of May 11th, 2011, 
Amy Pitson was seen picking up Timothy from his elementary school. She checked him out of his kindergarten class and gave no reason, although it didn't seem suspicious to staff at the time. After all, it's not uncommon for a mother to pull her child out of school early. In the camera footage from the school, everything seemed normal. She waited for Timothy and held his hand as they walked happily out of the door. The only thing off about this is that she told no one of her plans, and the pair never returned home. His father, James, went to school to pick Timothy up to find out he had been withdrawn by his mother. After calling family and assuring that no one had heard from them, he reported the mother and son missing. He also made several attempts to call Amy via her cell phone, but never got an answer. The first day that they were gone, after taking Timothy out of school, they were seen on surveillance camera in the Key Lime Cove Resort where they stayed the night. Again, nothing in this footage seemed out of the ordinary. Both mother and son seemed to be in good spirits. From here began a three-day vacation-style mystery where the two were spotted at the Kelhari Water Resort in Wisconsin. The surveillance footage in this case shows them standing in line as they wait to check out of the motel. Nothing is out of the ordinary and later that day Amy called a few family members to let them know that she and Timothy were okay. According to these family members, Timothy could be heard in the background during the phone call. The child was completely fine and only complained about being hungry, but didn't seem distressed or in danger. On the same day of this phone call, six hours later, Amy was seen on security camera in a family dollar store in Winnebago, Illinois. She was alone and it was clear that Timothy was not in the car waiting either. She made a small purchase of paper and pens. She was seen again shortly after on a camera in the Sullivan's Foods. Again, she was alone and her purchase was uncertain. On the same night at around 11, she checked herself into a motel in Rockford, Illinois. The next day, she was found dead by motel staff. She overdosed on antihistamines and had also slit both of her wrists. Amy left a suicide note by her bedside and also put two letters in the mail. One letter was to her mother and the other was addressed to a close friend. All three materials said generally the same thing. She claimed that Timothy was fine, with people that loved him and that he would never be found. Several of their belongings were missing, including her cell phone, Timothy's backpack and clothes, as well as her own clothes. According to her family, she had suffered from depression in the past but had always coped well and never hurt herself or anyone around her. It was clear she had been planning this for months. Timothy is still missing and several questions are left. Of course, the first being, where is Timothy? Was he really left alive or did Amy possibly kill him before killing herself? It's not uncommon for those planning suicide to make great memories with people that they plan to leave behind. This would explain their three-day spree of fun activities, but it also makes it unlikely that she would kill her own son. She would have not bothered to take him to such fun places if she planned on killing him. She likely wanted to make his last memories of her to be happy ones. That being said, forensic testing of Amy's SUV found that it had been recently driven along or sat in a gravel road before driving through or sitting a grassy area near a lake. As most of the locations where Amy and Timothy were seen appear nothing like this, it's questionable where Amy was stopped before Timothy vanished. Some say that this seemed like a place where she buried him, and others take it as clues to where the family she gave him up to may be living. We're also forced to wonder why Amy chose to give up her son to other people instead of letting him stay with his father. Although there's no evidence of abuse in the family, there's also no proof against it. Timothy would be about 13 years old today, and flyers of his assumed appearance are still posted throughout the country. Number 12. Levitating Car The building of major roads has increased all over the world in the past few decades, and a lot of crazy things seem to happen every day when it comes to commuting. With the addiction of dash cams and CCTV footage, crazy, hilarious, and even creepy things from the road can be viewed all over the world. This CCTV footage from a busy city in China is not like most road rage or bad driving videos we see. This is actually quite a mystery and has led to those that believe in the paranormal to speculate all kinds of possibilities. The video shows an average day of traffic, with cars traveling on both sides of the street, generally minding their own business. A small group of people are standing to the left of an intersection, more than likely waiting to cross. A mid-sized van and sedan are sitting a little further to the right, and traffic on the other side is going normally. Another van begins to approach the crossing, but just as it passes the stopping point, it seems to mysteriously lift into the air, as if some force grabbed the front of it and tried to throw it backwards. The other van and a car off to the right also move into the air less drastically. 
However, the people off to the left and every other car in the scene seem unaffected. There have been several attempts to explain this, such as an earthquake, a loose cable, and a disturbance in magnetic fields. None of these theories have been proven so far. So people have approached with other ideas like ghostly figures, superhumans, and time warps. Of course, these things haven't been proven either, but people are going to assume the wildest things they can just to add a little spice to their everyday. Number 11. Invisible Man In relation to crazy things happening on the road, this video comes from the dash cam of a driver who probably never expected to capture something this unbelievable. A car is traveling down what appears to be either a highway or a busy main road. The car moves over to the right lane, as does a jeep in front of it. Just as the jeep gets into the right lane, it slams on its brakes, and out of seemingly nowhere, a man falls from the left side of the vehicle. He appears to be injured and is only on screen for a split second. He then falls to the ground and it almost appears as if the car with the dash cam runs him over. Both cars stop with the jeep pulled off to the side. There have been claims that the owner of the dash cam got out of their car and that there was no man in sight, no blood, and no one saw him run off. People have said that the door flung open and he fell out. However, you don't clearly see a door open. More importantly, the Jeep's left side rear view mirror got broken off which means that the man had to come from the outside somewhere. But in the footage of the Jeep moving lanes, he wasn't visible in the lane in front of them. In fact, there wasn't even another car immediately in front of them. Another explanation has been that he dropped from the bottom of the vehicle, and as creepy as that would be, it doesn't explain the broken mirror, or the fact that he had totally vanished when the drivers left their cars. The more paranormal explanations for this are an invisible man who was in the way of traffic, and who only became visible after being injured before his ability reactivated and he ran from the scene. Some also speculate that this was actually the ghost of a crash victim who may haunt the highway, causing trouble for drivers. Whatever you believe, this video is pretty intense. Tense. In fact, it took a couple times watching it just to make sure he didn't come out of the car. Number 10. Flying Russian Girl This video has traveled the web for several years now. It's not new to the horror community, and it has also yet to be explained or proven in any way. A man was walking his dog in a snowy wooded area, which he claims not many people ever went to. As his dog runs off, he pans the camera to the right where a little girl in a red jacket can be seen floating in the air. Her legs are extended out behind her, and her arms are spread open. She's almost in a lying down position, and she makes a lot of head movements that also seem unnatural. An older woman who is probably her mother is looking up at her talking. She doesn't seem worried or in a panic. It actually seems like a pretty casual situation aside from the flying child. The dog barks and slightly whines which causes the man to move his camera swiftly into another direction. When the child and her mother are back in the shot, the child is now standing on the ground and her mother grabs her hand and they run off in a stressful hurry. Tarzan, come here. Again, this photo has had plenty of people trying to explain it by saying she was attached to wires, balancing on a tree, or that the footage was edited. Well, none of these have been proven, there's also never been any evidence against this being some kind of hoax. Overall, the video got thrown around and people made Peter Pan or crazy Russian jokes. If this child really could fly, her mother seemed to encourage it, and it has some very serious viewers worried. Would you allow your child to fly? Number 9. Caitlin Louder In late September of 2014, a 30-year-old woman from Murray, Utah named Caitlin Louder went missing from her home. She made a 911 call before she completely vanished. During the call, she explained to the dispatcher that there were two intruders in her home. She claimed that she didn't see them, but she could hear them somewhere in the house, talking to one another as if she wasn't there. She yelled, get out of my house to the alleged intruder several times. According to a report, her roommate was home during the call and told her the bolt is still on the door, it's impossible, as she didn't believe that there were intruders in the home. They must have a key, Louder argued with her roommate, convinced someone was in their home. Do you know who this person is? No, I don't. I just know that there's an intruder in my house. I heard someone say, hey, go in there, so there's obviously two of them. Get out of my is there, house! Is there... There's some bullets still lost. It's not impossible. They, they must have a key or something. Why is the door still lost? Well, <laughs> I can't explain that, but I heard 
like two people talking. After she went missing and this call was reviewed, police were worried Louder was delusional. Despite her family claiming that she had no history of mental illness, the police kept the possibility of her running away open. During the investigation, another piece of evidence towards her mental instability was found. A security camera captured Louder the very same day of her call. She was walking barefoot in the rain near her condo. She had her dog in her arms but let it down to walk around. She appeared to be having a very intense conversation with either her dog, herself, or someone around her. She was throwing her hands in the air and slightly pacing around. Not much later the same day, she suddenly started running, still barefoot towards the road. She left all of her belongings, her car, and her dog at home. She was never seen again and a search began. A friend explained to investigators that Louder was cleaning her home and writing a resume that day. She had just been fired from her longtime job as a social worker. Her family hired a private investigator in hopes of more specific help than what was being offered by law enforcement. On November 30th, 2014, Louder was finally found, but unfortunately she was not alive. Her body was found in the Jordan River five miles from her home. Her toxicology reports found that she had no drugs or abnormal chemicals in her body, and her autopsy which concluded in April 2015 was deemed inconclusive. While no foul play was suspected, there was also not the usual signs of drowning. Police pronounced her death as a suicide or accident, but her family doesn't believe that. Considering that Louder had no history of delusional behavior, there were no drugs in her system, and it doesn't seem as though she had drowned. Labeling her death as a suicide feels like a cheap excuse to her family, and they have urged further investigations. However, her 911 call, the video footage, and the fact she had just lost her job makes professionals believe she could have had a meltdown or possibly abused drugs, which left her system before the toxicology report could catch them. Another fact that seems to convince investigators that her 911 call back in September was not her first false claim of intruders or other delusions. In one call, she had reported a fight at a wedding. Not only was there no fight, there was not even a wedding. She made the call from her home. Though those calls have never been released, they seem to aid in the idea that Louder was losing touch with reality for months. Either way, even if Louder had been having delusions, the details of her death seem too open-ended to convince most that read about the case. There have been paranormal explanations for this as well as theories about a stalker trying to make her seem crazy before killing her. Louder's family still fights for answers, but this young woman can never have her life back. Number 8. The Possessed Man The CCTV footage was captured in a corner store in an unknown region. The video starts out to what seems like a casual everyday trip to the local convenience store. A man walks towards the back of the store where the coolers are, probably to get a drink. Things are fine as he reaches into a cooler and grabs a can, but then he begins to shake uncontrollably, throwing his head back and jolting around. It seems as if his muscles are also locked up as he has this fit. As this is happening, he's also making strange noises that seem like short screams, yells, or the attempt of word. Two other people in this store that are in the view of the camera notice the man shaking violently. The first person is a woman who looks at him in fear, drops what she is holding and then runs to the front of the store. Another person in the back, whose face cannot be seen, does generally the same thing. This is of course pretty strange because if he is having a seizure or other medical crisis, these people would likely approach him, not run the other way. Many speculate that these people saw or heard something that was not picked up on camera. The man continues to shake while simultaneously looking around as if watching for something. His hands are at his sides as he opens, closes, and shakes them like he's trying to grasp something. He tugs at his shirt and drops to his knees. The woman from before comes back, possibly to try and help, but he points a finger at her in the middle of his freakout and yells several times in a grunting and high-pitched voice. She immediately runs back to the front of the store as the man continues to throw his head around and gets off his knees. At the end of this footage, the man falls to the ground and twitches slightly before going completely motionless. There's a white fog or reflection on the cooler door and a few things unexplainably fall off a shelf nearby. No. 
Many skeptics claim that this video is faked because CCTV footage can't record sound, the timestamps change at different points with no glitch, and this could easily be a strange performance put on for some attempt at fame. The issue here is that some CCTV footage are in fact capable of recording audio. The timestamps can be explained by a paranormal presence, according to the paranormal community, or the timestamps could have been added by the system later and would not have needed a glitch in the video. And even if this man were faking it, it doesn't explain the reflection in the cooler, the things falling off the shelf, or the clearly terrified people around him. According to those that believe in a higher power, this man was possessed by a devil or demon, or possibly even an angry spirit. He collapsed at the end because possession is an exhausting experience. Of course, the problem with these explanations are that not everyone believes in this kind of stuff. Any explanation could be right, and since there has never been a report of additional video published, it will remain speculation. This video serves as proof of just how far people will go for 15 minutes of fame, or in the opposite end of the spectrum, it serves as proof that there are things around us that we cannot see but that can harm us. Number 7. Nuren Jaslyn Jasmine Nuren was only 8 years old when she left her house to a local market in efforts to purchase a hair clip on August 20th, 2007. She left her mom and was never seen alive again. It's uncertain why she was traveling to the market alone, and her parents filed a missing persons report the next day. Search parties gathered to find the little girl, and during investigations, the police stumbled upon local CCTV footage. The footage shows Nuren being forced into a white van by an unidentifiable man. On September 17th, a gym bag was found which contained the nude body of a young girl that had been dead for at least six hours. She had been kept alive for over a month, to be beaten, tortured, raped, and eventually died from the immense abuse. Among the list of horrible things done to her body, a cucumber was stuck inside her genitals, which caused a severe bacterial infection. The infection was considered to be what led to her death, meaning her kidnappers would have kept her alive longer if her young body would have sustained the abuse. When Nuren's parents were asked to identify the body, they didn't recognize their daughter whatsoever, and she was even missing a very particular scar. They rejected the idea of this body being their daughter and continued their search. However, a week or so later, in-depth DNA testing confirmed that the body was in fact 8-year-old Nuren. A few days later, more CCTV footage was released to the public. One video showed a man on a motorcycle talking on his phone and dropping off the body of Nuren. Another video showed a van similar to the one that abducted the child, picking up a woman that had been loitering in the area. The van was filled with three men who talked with the woman for several minutes before leaving. While none of them directly acknowledged the bag, it's unsure if it was because that they were involved or because they simply didn't notice. This case sparked outrage in the community and in the media. People deemed this crime the worst in years. A prime minister suggested releasing a list of registered sex offenders to help aid in finding her killer, as they were assumed to be a psychopathic pedophile. The inspector general of the police also offered that her parents be further investigated, as negligent parenting was considered a crime and could be punishable by law. Furthermore, there was speculation among several people in the community that her parents may have even sold her to this pedophile. Other people in the community, though, were outraged at the idea of punishing parents further after losing a child under such gruesome circumstances. Several men and one woman were arrested in a shop but were all eventually released based on lack of evidence. Later in September, another woman was arrested as the police tried to apprehend her. She attempted to swallow a SIM card she was carrying. However, the contents of the SIM card were either unrelated to the case or were simply never released. The woman was also eventually let go because of lack of evidence. So as of today, Nuren's killer is free. The footage in the CCTV videos were too blurry to make out faces or license plates. Local police have a reward still being offered in the amount of 10,000 Malaysian ringgits, which roughly converts to 2,500 US dollars. This amount was matched by a local businessman, bringing the total award to over $5,000. This reward is promised to anyone who brings in important information, and even more is offered for the killer himself being turned in. This case has several layers and varying opinions related to it, which makes it more than just a sick murder. Number 6. Man Meets Himself 
time travel is a concept that has been explored and played with for centuries. There have been legends, stories, works of literature, films, and even alleged evidence to the idea of time travel. This video has over 800,000 views and has enraged plenty of people as being completely fake, but has encouraged others that time travel is possible and happens to us randomly. It's a 15 second clip which starts with the title screen. This is my video from the future recorded on a mobile phone. Uploaded in 2006, it just features two men talking to one another, hugging and looking at the camera. They don't say anything and it even seems like the video doesn't have audio at all. The men look very much alike, and even more boggling, they have the exact same tattoo. This is the story according to the man who recorded and published the video. It all happened on the afternoon of the 30th of August. It was a beautiful day and I was on my way home from a job. When I got home, I found water on the kitchen floor. Somehow there was a leak. I got my tools and opened up the doors to the sink and started to work. When I reached in to examine the pipes, they seemed to be further in than I remembered. I had to crawl inside the cabinet and as I did so, I discovered that it just continued. So I just kept on crawling further and further into the cabinet. In the end of the tunnel I saw a light and when I got there I realized I was in the future. I met myself as 72 years old, the year was 2042. I did a lot of tests on him to see if he was really me. And the strange thing is that he knew everything about me where I hid my secret stuff when I was in first grade, and what the score was in the soccer match in the summer of 88. He knew it all. We even had the same tattoo, although his was a little faded. He told me some of the stuff that will happen, but not so much, and I promised not to tell anyone. I made a film with my mobile phone. Unfortunately, the quality is not the best, but it's what I have got. Actually, I don't care if people think I am a liar. I know I'm not. I met myself in the future and I was fine, that's all I know, but if it has happened to me it probably must have happened to someone else. Number 5. Dynamo Jack This Indonesian acupuncturist became popular when he was featured in a documentary titled The Ring of Fire in Indonesian Odyssey. Dynamo Jack was discovered when a cameraman was injured during filming and they sought Jack's medical attention. The team went in for what they assumed would be a usual visit but they left totally amazed. During normal acupuncture, the doctor was somehow able to pass small volts of electricity through the small metal needles. The electricity caused the patient to shake in reaction to electricity and also be nearly immediately cured of his damaged eye. He uses acupuncture needles in the traditional points, but with a twist. Through them he directs a form of electricity as he calls it. But he doesn't draw the electricity from a wall socket. He claims to generate it within his own body. Dynamo Jack claimed that he obtained electrical abilities as well as control over energy through intense meditation. During this visit, the team also caught video of Jack causing a small crumple of newspaper to catch fire. He squats near the paper and holds a hand over it while focusing or likely meditating. The fire begins to slowly ignite and Jack even leaves his hand momentarily in the fire without pain. Unfortunately, the doctor didn't know this footage was going to be shared with the public and he was very upset when he found out. While he did offer to show this team his abilities, he didn't want the public eye knowing of them, as he claimed he sought these unnatural powers for his own evolution as a human and not to help others. He didn't want fame and believed the skeptics would circulate negative energy in his name. Of course, speaking of skeptics, many claim this footage is faked. However, the documentary was filmed in 1987 and faking footage like this didn't become popular until the rise of the internet. Many believe that obtaining abilities like this is actually quite possible through meditation and spiritual journey. And the idea that further filming was refused by Dynamo Jack lends to the idea that this wasn't just for fame. Otherwise, several more videos would have been publicized. Number 4. Thailand Girl with Telekinesis this video comes from a bus stop along a busy city street in Thailand. Several people exit the train and two young schoolgirls get into some kind of altercation with an older man. It's unsure what the argument is about, 
but one girl seems to be really telling him off when he starts to approach them with his fist in the air. The other girl, who has mostly remained quiet, immediately throws her hand up as if she stops the man, and he unexplainably is thrown back with great force, without having even been touched by the girl. Another man beside him begins to yell at the girls as well. The girl throws a hand into the air, which subsequently throws the man into the air as well. <laughs> <laughs> the girl looks down at her hands as if she was amazed by her own power. A few seconds later, even her friend is afraid of her and is backing away from the situation. The girl faces towards a table set up alongside the street and it falls down, knocking several things over. She becomes upset and starts to scream and things near her begin to crash and break. Even a street light appears to fall. If these really are some form of unknown telekinetic powers, this young girl was apparently unaware she possessed them and is clearly terrified by her own ability. While this video could have likely been fake or connected to some media ploy, there has been no solid evidence suggesting so. With over 7 billion people in the world and scientific anomalies all around us, is it really all that hard to believe that people out there are capable of more than just most of us? Number 3. Time Traveling Woman For this entry, we have decided to group two videos into one because they are very similar and are both possible evidence for time travel, and there is no evidence related to it other than what we see. A woman seems to walk by the camera, unaware it's even there. She has a device or object pressed up to her ear as if talking and laughing. The way she holds this device is uncanny to the way cell phones are held, and there's no clear explanation for why else she'd be talking. The next video has a little more of a story to it. This is a clip from an unknown 1938 film that features several people walking along the street. A small group of three women and one man pass the camera. The woman in the middle appears to be holding a black device up to her ear and talking, much like the woman in the first clip, and much like anyone using a cell phone today. As she nears the camera, she looks right into it, removes the device from her ear and begins to talk to the people next to her. As she moves the device from her ear, we can see it a little more clearly, and it's obvious that she didn't just have her hand on her face. However, the details of the object are unclear. The original post of this video on YouTube featured a comment from user Planet Check in which they claim that this woman was their grandmother. According to Planet Check, she was 17 years old. Planet Check writes, I asked her about this video and she remembers it quite clearly. She says DuPont, the company that reportedly owns the factory in this video, had a telephone communication section in the factory. They were experimenting with wireless telephones. Gertrude and five other women were given these wireless phones to test out for a week. Gertrude is talking to one of the scientists holding another wireless phone who is off to her right as she walks by. This seems unlikely as the exploration of wireless phones as early as 1938 would have been released to the public or at least documented somewhere in history. Others claim it isn't impossible as it could have been more like a walkie-talkie, but it still seems unlikely to just be handed out to a random young woman without any documentation. Furthermore, Planet Check claims that they still have the phone, but never updated with a photo. It's not impossible that this really was the case, since it seems more logical than time travel, but there are still too many missing pieces for anyone with a sense of wonder to just blindly accept this as the answer. Even if these women were time travelers, there's still a huge issue even with that theory, cell phone towers. If you were to time travel back in time with a cell phone, it likely wouldn't even work, much less be able to make cell phone calls. The programming just doesn't make sense and the lack of cell phone towers mean that there wouldn't even be a signal. So if these women did have cell phones, how could they be talking on them and who would they possibly be talking to? 
regardless, they're holding some sort of device that was not known to the public, and that on its own is a mystery. Number two, Mike Tyson boxing match, time traveler. Another time traveling case that became popular is this video of a man at a Mike Tyson boxing match in 1995. The video is a short portion of the filmed match and it shows an audience member holding what appears to be a smartphone. Camera phones weren't even manufactured and sold until 2000, so the idea of a smartphone is even more wild. The alleged time traveler is a man sitting in the front row in the audience. He's holding a white vertical device with a black spot or lens towards the top and a small flash to the right. He appears to be looking through the device instead of directly at the fight. Explanations for this have included old digital cameras and special recording devices. Aside from the lens and flash being all wrong for cameras during this time period and the man looking through the device as opposed through a viewfinder of some kind, Another issue is the orientation at which he is holding the device. It wasn't uncommon for older cameras to be used in a vertical portrait position, but it was quite rare. Because of photo printing and viewfinders, it was most common to keep your camera in a landscape position. There are a lot of things that make this confusing, and conspiracy theorists and paranormal enthusiasts speculate a time traveler, advanced alien, or government worker with access to technology advanced beyond the 90s. Either way, no one has ever published photos that appear to have been taken right at the event via smartphone. But no one has come forth claiming it was them and they were using a certain old camera, so this remains an open mystery, available for any explanation. Number 1. The Jameson Family Bobby, Sherilyn, and their daughter Madison Jameson were originally believed to have been gone missing by the means of foul play and not by their own choice. The family vanished in early October 2009 from their hometown of Red Oak, Oklahoma. Family and friends had not heard from them in several days and noticed they weren't at their home either. So a report was filed which led to their truck being discovered a few days after they went missing. The family truck was found in Lamater County, Oklahoma, about a 30 minute drive from their hometown. Inside the truck, the beloved family dog had been left behind to starve. The dog was severely malnourished and on the verge of death when it was rescued from the vehicle. Also inside the truck were Bobby and Sherilyn's IDs, wallets, and mobile phones. A GPS system was left behind, as well as $32,000 in cash. The family was known to carry large amounts of cash, but friends and family admit that $32,000 seemed like much more than usual. In Bobby's phone, a photo of Madison was found. It appeared to have been taken in the Woodland Mountains. The child is dirty, has messy hair, and seemed quite scared. Family don't believe the photo was taken by Bobby because of the fear on the child's face and the fact that she is not looking in the direction of the camera. This was the only photo taken on the phone since the family disappeared. In November 2013, four years after the family vanished, their skeletal remains were found by two hunters. They were located less than three miles from where their truck had been abandoned. In July 2013, after extensive testing, the remains were confirmed to have been belonged to the Jamesons. However, a cause of death could not be determined as the bodies were too badly decayed. Security footage had been found during investigations from the day before the family's disappearance. It showed the family loading belongings into their truck. They seemed to have been in a trance-like state, hardly speaking to one another, pacing from the truck to the house even when they were loading things and generally appearing paranoid. They were also very thin, weak, and sluggish in the footage. They never acknowledged each other as they were walking back and forth from the vehicle. Never acknowledged each other. It's like they were the only persons in the world. This led to the possibility of the parents abusing drugs or being addicted to meth. There had been no reports of drug use in the home though, and investigators didn't find a single trace of drugs or drug paraphernalia. This footage did lead to the discovery that several weeks before going missing, Bobby had spoken to a local preacher about his home being haunted. He had asked if he could purchase holy bullets to kill the spirit tormenting his family. Even Sherilyn had reported the alleged hauntings to family and friends. This event was what led the family inquiring about a local home for sale. They were looking to leave behind those supposed spirits and start over. According to medical reports and family reports, Bobby and Sherilyn both suffered from depression in the past, and in addition, Sherilyn was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. While these types of mental illnesses don't commonly cause delusions or hallucinations, in severe cases it is possible. Despite these medical details, people still speculate several different explanations such as cult involvement, cartel drug dealings, alien or paranormal abductions, and several other things. 
it has been three years since the discovery of the family's remains, and there has been no further evidence to explain their death. So technically at this point, people can speculate literally anything, which is what makes this case so popular. Thanks for checking out this countdown. Be sure to subscribe as we upload new videos every week. It'd really mean a lot if you join the notification squad by clicking this gear button, checking this box, and then clicking save. See ya.